What is the best way to explain something that feels impossible to get across? Over the last couple of years, I have been picking up little Rachel from school and letting her get in the car. And as I'm driving off, I ask her if she's okay. How's your day? How you feeling? She says, fine, is good. And I just trust it. I haven't looked in the rear view mirror to see that that little Rachel's actually crying as she's saying it, like silent tears are running down her face and like her heart is absolutely broken. And I hate saying it took Callie passing away, but honestly, when Callie passed away, it made me realize I haven't looked in the rearview mirror to see what little Rachel's actually feeling. And I haven't taken a second to pull over for my younger self and give her the time that she needs to actually process and communicate and heal in order to move forward and be the best version of herself and feel safe and protected and seen. I've just been on this like grind and rat race This episode is not like my other ones because the more I'm pulling over for my younger self and taking that time, I'm realizing I want to choose happy over hustle, which in in turn is turning into this incredible slow life. You see, pain pulled me here post-breakup and the purpose I thought was Callie being here and DIYing this life for us and then now in post-Callie, this quote-unquote hole in my heart I, I realize isn't is a hole in my heart but it isn't because it's just going to be that way forever it's because it's this all the love I had for Callie is now just misplaced it doesn't know where to go and that is so painful and it might have taken me six months to change my perspective and get back into flow but I want to share it from the ground up because this is probably one of the biggest DIYs I've ever done is placing that love I had for Callie into turning my home into my dream desert farmstead I have mentioned Gracie here on my channel before, but I've never gone in depth and I can no longer move forward on my channel without bringing you into the full picture of my life because the purpose, the trajectory and the just, I don't know, the overall bigger picture of my life has drastically changed because of Gracie in the best way possible. And when Callie passed away in September, the woman who runs the rescue I just like would show up and be crying, you know, and wearing all black and I just tell her I want to give up. And she said, well, what about Gracie? And so allow me to introduce to you my saving grace. No progress has been made in this room because I listened to myself after this TV breakdown. Let me tell you a little bit about Gracie, girl. Hi. Hi. This is a story about how Gracie became my saving grace. This is the first time that I've gone to Joey's Happy Home Animal Rescue after telling Melinda, who heads it over there, um, that I'm interested in this wild Mustang named Gracie. But I didn't really want to try to bond with her because I didn't really know her story. And so once I asked Melinda, and Melinda said, you know, she's actually just being trained to be ready for adoption. I asked to get on the ground up with the trainer that works with her and she said yes. So this is me, this is like a little personal diary entry because if it does work out that Gracie becomes your horse, Rachel, like what the hell, what a crazy journey. Anyways, I'm not getting my hopes up because the horse will tell you as well, right? Like as much as I'm gonna love her and who knows if I'm gonna click with her, she needs to equally click back with me. Like she needs to feel comfortable and she needs to feel, she needs to bond with me. I need to be her human and today is day one of officially trying. Hi, lover girl. Well, hello to you, Dewey. Hello, gorgeous can I tell you about my Gracie girl? Well, we'll be here for hours if I don't try to break down just like the basics. It's cool doing this edit back because I mean, it's it's since made this footage. Hi gorgeous. Can I see you? Hi. Hello. and seeing her and I's relationship drastically change, you can see that she has her butt towards me, she's not really looking at what I'm doing, and um, she doesn't really care. But then as the clips go on, 
She's like, oh, you're really coming around a lot. And then she starts kind of paying attention. Oh my God, I'm not gonna cry, that's so stupid. And I'm not coming around with treats and just waiting for her to come to the stall gate and me give them to her and walk away. I'm trying to speak to her a little bit different to let her know that I'm serious if she'll have me. Oddly, Gracie came to me at a time where I was like starting to not show up for myself. And this is prior to Callie passing away. And it's so interesting watching back and pulling all the footage I've ever taken and seeing the timeline unfold. Because when I'm in it, it seems impossible. Like, there's no way I'm going to be able to adopt this horse. There's no way this year is going to get better. Um, there's no, I'm not meant to be around horses. I don't know anything. But like, everybody starts from the ground up. And I love that that Rachel, even though she was having a crappy year before Callie passed, like, didn't give up. Because she, Gracie, gave me a reason to show up for myself. Like, the more I showed up for her, the more I realized I needed to show up for me because how the hell am I gonna show up for her? Gracie was my breath because work was just overwhelming me and, and tearing me down. I just couldn't do it anymore, essentially on the work front. And it and it's so interesting to edit this back and watch the timeline unfold because when obviously when I'm in it, I don't I can't see any answer <laughs> to anything as it's happening. But now I'm like looking back at all this and it's just nutty the timing of it all. Horses really do heal. I just kept showing up and then one day Darla I could feel her presence before I could see her. I was in the stall uh, showing my friend Christy, like, oh my gosh, this is Gracie, and I'm like really interested in her, but I have no idea if it's even possible, and I could like feel Darla walking up, and I like got out of the stall, and I didn't want to be someone that just like, I don't know, that just like told Darla I knew everything. I wanted to be really honest, and that was terrifying because I needed to just be like, I don't know anything, but I'm interested in your daughter, essentially. I remember my first training session with Darla like it was yesterday because it was like a 42-minute horizontal video that I took um, just for me. It worked out, and Darla and I trained with Gracie for the first time, and she showed me a few basics, very few, and said, if you can catch her, you know, you can work with her and groom her when you come. And so that was all I needed. That was the green light I needed. It was full speed ahead with as much as I can do on the days I could get there and just show Gracie even more that I want to take it to the next step. I want to show her that I am her safety and I am a leader, you know. Working with Gracie on my own was so nerve wracking, but you couldn't have your nerves worked up. You had to come in calm and settled because that's what she trusted. So finding my rhythm with her on my own with the little knowledge that I had was such an incredible learning experience for me because it just gave confidence in me existing again as I gave confidence in her existing with me. And just a friendly reminder, again, I'm just completely green in this area. So learning with her from the ground up and having that opportunity, it just was so different for me. I didn't really recognize it in the moment, but watching all this footage back, I'm watching Gracie know what she needs to do because she's already learned that language and having the patience with me to learn to trust me, to speak her language and get up onto her level, essentially. The next couple months, Gracie just gave me this new life and this new focus and this new light. Um, out of all the weird behind the scenes stuff that was happening, I just found myself finding myself as I was figuring her out. It 
felt like 2023 was finally looking up, honestly, the more that I kept bonding with this mare and the more I kept finding that my passion lied in horses for real and that little Rachel was on to something. And then boom, September happens and Callie passes away and it officially becomes the worst year of my life. And I just wanted to stop showing up for everything. And I just kept hearing like, what about Blaze? And what about Gracie? And Blaze was here home with me, you know, Gracie wasn't yet. So it was again, more of a go time, even though I was so not in the mental space, I knew that out of all the things that could be going on in my life, having Gracie there is probably the most healing. So I fully leaned into that. Anytime I was sad, anytime I felt like I just wanted to quit and give up, anytime the world felt way too heavy, Gracie. That's what I did. I just kept going back to her. But what was the next step? That's kind of where it got me. And the next step was Her and I are both learning from the ground up. What if I just adopted her now and we did the training together? I needed to move her in order for her and I to grow because there was only so much I could do at the rescue, really, if I'm being honest, because Darla wasn't there full time. I needed Darla's knowledge full time. And um, (laughs) as scary as it is, that's when I adopted her. All right, it is 10.56 on December 3rd. Um, 2023. Hello. I have been crying (laughs) so hard and Gracie is being trailered in front of me and I officially am a horse mom. This portion of the journey isn't to my house. This next chapter of ours is really basically just like our year of intense dating and making sure that we work for each other. But I don't know I'm just like thinking about how dark this year was and like I don't I'm trying to make up a million reasons as to why I'm crying but I really just think it's because I'm happy and I just have a fucking words <laughs> so exciting literally can't make this up. We're pulling in at 11.11 to drop Gracie off. And I have that tattooed on my ear. So it just feels like everything is seriously just working out. And I just was talking about her and you can hear her winning. I can't believe it. I cannot believe that we're pulling up at 11.11. (laughs) I don't necessarily know if I had a way to like come back full time to YouTube, but I just feel like this is the right episode. It's Christmas Eve and three years ago on this day, Callie and I drove out here to start our life together um, in the desert. And the room makeover that I have been working on, the reason it's taking so long is that's the room that I found Callie in. I woke up and Callie had passed away when I was sleeping. She was in that room out of all rooms. She never goes in there. And um, that room has been tough for me because like, I know the blood stain on the floor. I know that I had to wrap her body. I know that 
Lindsay and I took care of that together and it was one of the roughest days of my life. So as I'm like driving through town today, like living the life that her and I had built for the last three years, I thought this was the only way to come back full time to YouTube and really commit myself again because I just miss it so much and um, I miss you guys so much and I've been like stockpiling content, making excuses and I don't know, something just pushed me today. So I'm gonna honor Callie. But like, this is why her and I came out here is to build this life. And even though I do not have Callie this year, I do have Gracie. And she is my light at the end of this darkness. I think my most favorite thing about this whole process, not only the healing process and just having Gracie by my side and Darla and Brie, but watching Gracie go from like rescue Gracie, like at the rescue to decompressed at Darla's and like thriving and calm <laughs> and quiet and consistency. It just makes me giggle. Cause I was like, I am the same way. I, Everyone thinks chaos is where I perform the best. Everyone thinks chaos is where I love it the most, but I don't. I want to I want to be in a slow, calm, consistent environment that just shows me that I'm going to be nurtured. And the more that the months go by that we're training, the more moments that happen and honestly the memories that I am banking with these insanely strong and just so kind Ugh, these women are just incredible, Bree and Darla. And the herd, Darla's horses, she has four horses, and they're all individually, obviously, they're all their own individuals, but to be in that environment, I don't know, going from not feeling worthy of literally anything after Callie passed away to like feeling so powerful when I pull up there and walking up to my girl and knowing that this is all a process still too, but I did it. You know, I got her out of the rescue. We're on to the next step and we're moving forward in life. Like I said at the very beginning of this episode, I can't just be standing by Callie's dead body and expecting to live a life that's just not going to happen. And it's not rude of me to move on. And I know that. I know that. And I know you guys have told me that, but like it felt like it. From May on and Callie passing away, I swear to God, I've had no time for nothing. And Gracie gives me this peace and this presence that I've never felt in my life. And that is why I stopped renovating this house. Because renovating for me doesn't give me joy. It doesn't bring me happiness right now. Renovating to potentially bring Gracie home, my brain started shifting. Like, I can live in this house. I know these are projects. That, but like, when my people come over, they don't care, you know. I can live in this house as is. Gracie cannot live in the barn as is. I'm so happy I'm finally really pulling over for that little Rachel because you can see it in the smile with these guys that she's there again. And it just feels so, so good. <laughs> that is the truth. Everybody meet Christy. Christy is not only one of my dearest friends, but she is actually the head of sustainability for my property moving forward to turn this into my dream desert farmstead. Again, I have no knowledge on it, um, but she wanted to be part of a farm and I said, why don't we partner up? So we did. And then Leo just honestly fell into our lap via a friend that was moving. He needed an opportunity to be rehomed because he couldn't go with the original owner. So we got to work. Literally, we're getting a pig. It is not a joke, not a drill. That is gonna be a pig house and a pig yard. I've really just like held myself back from living since Callie passed away and I've just felt unworthy of having fun. And so, I just miss that Rachel. I really do. So let's have some fun, shall we? Okay, it's okay. You want to start a farm? You're doing it. You're not by yourself. Christy's the co-parent. You got this. I'm literally sitting, sleeping with Blaze on the couch right next to <clears throat> the front door. 
because I'm just so paranoid about the pig, but he's so happy. He's literally a pig in the blanket, like literally a pig in a blanket. together today okay hi ladies this is a pig he's your new brother so my entire five acres isn't quite yet fenced off but this front yard is and so it will be all his i just wanted to create a designated area for him to go to if he so chose and if you know me i try to reuse as much material from the property as possible because there was so much of it on hand so that's what you're about to see unfold well it's good to know that you like it because that's gonna be your house, bud. I'm in the middle of doing it. I wanted to see if Leo liked anything I was putting out, and the more he liked things, I started to DIY off of that. But then one night, he just decided to come on inside. Hi, it's a good boy. You could do whatever you want. What do you think? <laughs> Up to you. Okay. taken me a second to get to know Leo boy and we have a lot of fun things we know about him now hi baby I'm just gonna make some updates and I, it's a very unexpected Valentine you know <laughs> Now this isn't Leo's and I'll be all here on my property, but I am working with what I have available. And so that's what you see me doing here is DIYing a space for him currently. But eventually he's gonna have access to the full five acres and a huge barn to live out of and different stables and amenities. So, Leo is checking out his new digs, clean that out. This is gonna be the extension of the house, so this will be a wall and more for him to lay into. I need to figure out a way for him to not dump his water. We're gonna clear up the land, and this is his mud bath area, like designated mud bath. And when it rains, this can get muddy, but that can be a little bit more dry, so he can go back and forth.
on. You gotta walk up on that. There you go. There you go. Come up here all the way. Come here. It's okay. It's a paver. Come on. There you go. We're gonna get a second paver because I want him to walk up onto concrete every day that he's eating just to help him with his feet. I still need to get him trimmed. Um, but I think I'm gonna go back to Home Depot tonight and get one paver for here. And then this will shut off here and be his sawdust little area. Um, I walked in there thinking they were made of packing peanuts and I went to grab one and almost busted my face open. It was really embarrassing because there's two gentlemen there and it's like, I know I'm strong enough to grab them. I just get so socially awkward when I'm, anybody approaches me in Home Depot that I shut down and I was like, yeah, sure. You can help me. But I got them this time by myself. So this takes a little. Like they're not, they are heavy. Ooh, as I say that and I'm stuck. Penny. Okay. Leo to be excited about this. Again, I love that I took my time with this episode because looking back at how much Leo has decompressed and how close he is to me all the time, the way he like runs to me when I come home, the way he's completely fine with Blaze and lets Blaze like attempt to cuddle him. There are just so many things, again, behind the scenes that I needed to take a second to pull over for that younger self and truly heal and give myself a minute. And it just... I am just so excited to see where this property goes because before, honestly, not saying it was boring, but it was a little bit boring. Now it's like possibilities are endless. What do you mean we have Leo here on the land? You know, what do you mean we're customizing a little house for him? <laughs> it's insanity, just like we did with the chickens. I'm really utilizing this backyard, this small fenced off area as a tester zone to see what I can grow with vegetables, flowers, uh, what can I bring into this ecosystem? What can I give back? Now I'm going to look at little pig's pet board. Pig. Pig board. Pig. 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 So the back of this is kind of becoming the potting area where we're seeing what flowers and what veggies can pop up and then we can nurture and replant in the garden that I spaced off before with the chickens. Oh my goodness, you guys, I just am loving this Rachel, and she's so new to me, she's so new to me, but God, I can already see how strong she is and how much purpose and passion and pull she has for this past Rachel. She's like, nah, -uh. Callie and I got you, girl. We are going to continue on this mission. It doesn't look like what we thought it was going to look like, but we absolutely got this. Looks a little different. Hi guys, hi guys, good morning. Come on, it's just, I made it look new and give you more space. 
You just gotta discover it, okay? There we go. Explore the space. Callie. I don't know if he'll like it, but they just carry so much weight on these limbs. Look at those eyes. I can't believe I can see your eyes, babe. You have such pretty eyes, Leo. So during this time of me getting to know Leo, him decompressing here, making sure we are the right fit for each other, Christy, you know, she doesn't live in the desert, but she made her way back and I was able to kind of teach her about Leo and show her what I've learned and show her what makes him happy and not and his favorite snacks and just what we got going on since we pushed the old doghouse into the front yard. <laughs> Which I don't mind, I just want to make sure he's happy. This is evidence that we are learning how to sit for a treat. And he just loves he, he just loves it here. He loves it inside, he loves it near us, and I just can't get over he's an indoor pig. Let me see those eyes, babe. <gasps> Look at that face. He's so handsome. He's a baked potato if I've ever seen one. Like, are you joking me? And these two have been getting closer and closer. I am so happy to be checked back in. And that little Leo is settling in so nice. Checking back into what Callie and I came here to do even though I wasn't being so present as I was building it out for her, what a way to honor that little chunk, you know? Like, really live in what we've DIY'd. Live up to the channel name. It's weird, I can see it now. Before I was stressed, I can see it. What a wild ride this is going to be. I have no idea what content is about to look like. All I know is I am choosing Happy Over Hustle. And although I know a lot of you could catch on to that was the case over the last couple of years, I hope to be the prime example to not only, you know, you guys, but to other creators like, hey, we can make a switch and we can choose Happy and Health Over Hustle. So I will see you soon for um, another DIY of life or another thing. <laughs>